Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz inside the nation's capital with a member of Congress. His name is Rodney Davis. He represents the great state of Illinois, which has been hit uh, by some serious economic downturns as it relates to steel. When we think about that whole rust belt, and Illinois can be part of it. And part of the problem is that we have other nations acting in a matter that's just unfair. Right. It's a simple word, but it really says a lot. Explain the concept of dumping and what that means. Yeah, this is an issue that I tackled in my previous job working for another member of Congress, yes. John Shimkus. Mm -hmm. And it's an issue that had to be addressed. And now that right. I get to have a seat at the table, right. I wanted to work with my colleagues to make sure that the illegal practice of steel dumping doesn't take place anymore and adversely affect thousands of jobs in the Metro East. And what does that mean, yeah, illegal what, dumping? What happens is you have countries uh, like China, and then years ago it was Canada, mm. that were dumping cheap steel into our country. And we would follow the adjudication process, and when it was a ruling given in our favor, that steel, though, was already out into the marketplace, right, so it right. was already done. So we are tightening up the adjudication process as part of this trade package, and we hope that uh, the, the families that rely upon U.S. Steel in right. Granite City to feed, to feed their families, sure. they, we hope that they have jobs. And let's talk about what you're describing. As we know, there is the trade bill that is moving forward uh, through our nation, but you have an element that you're looking to insert, which is known as the American Trade Enforcement Effectiveness Act. And part of the problem is, is that when there is a complaint about dumping, as we stand today, it just takes too long. And so you're looking to streamline the process so the dumped steel doesn't even get in. It doesn't get in. It doesn't get in the marketplace. And then it means that those who are making good quality steel at the Granite City plant still have jobs because right. they're able to send that to American manufacturers and then send it globally as part of fair trade. Part of this bill uh, is going to be the Customs and Enforcement Package. Right. And this is where Mike Bost really led. Another member of Congress. Um, yes, Mike mm -hmm. from southwestern Illinois, along with John Shimkus and I. We put this legislation out. In this language, we've gotten a commitment from Chairman Ryan that mm -hmm. it'll be part of the Customs Enforcement Package. And when that happens, this will make TPA and trade agreements in the right. future better for the steel industry. And let's talk about trade and trade agreements, TPA Trade Promotion Authority, TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, what we do know is that this issue has become uh, pretty contentious and also splits parties a bit. It's yes. not necessarily Democrat, Republican. You have Democrats supporting it, you have Republicans opposing it. Where do you come down on the general concept of providing a president, whomever that president may be, with fast track authority so Congress then has an up or down vote? I'm in favor of this, this mm. specific TPA mm -hmm. uh, because I think it actually provides more fair trade opportunities. It's going to include the language that will hopefully save 2,000 jobs in, in southwestern Illinois in Granite City. It will, it will also have the most transparency of any trade promotion mm -hmm. authority language that we've seen in our nation's history. And Congress will get a review right. period, as will the American public. So a lot of the naysayers will talk about how this will lead to less transparency, less fair trade, less protections for American workers. And I say they're wrong. The one issue that does seem to continue to surface and create some bipartisan opposition to TPA, TPP, is the question of, of currency mm -hmm. and currency manipulation. It's a little inside baseball, but I do think it's important to mention because there's a concern that if currency and currency manipulation is not addressed in a sufficient way, the United States could get burned. What's your sense? Well, it's an issue that they debated in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Senator Portman, who actually introduced and, and put into the Senate TPA package uh, the exact same language regarding steel dumping that we're mm. looking to insert in, in our package, mm -hmm. he, he addressed this issue, and it, and it failed in the Senate. And we have to remember right. that in a global scale, uh, the U.S. could be considered a currency manipulator uh, with our current interest rates and what the Fed does on a regular basis, too. So it's one of those be careful what you ask for okay. opportunities. However, I do believe we have to stop countries like China from manipulating the yen and their currency. And we need to do everything we can to ensure that our trade opportunities globally are fair opportunities. But China's not one of the nations that's part of the TPP. That's exactly so right. How does, since China's the major manipulator here in currency, how is this issue get, 
continually inserted into the debate when they're not part of it? I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> right, question. which is uh, maybe uh, yes. it, it may be right. a reason why mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not part of the Senate package, and and I doubt it's going to be included in the House package. But it's something we need to be concerned about. But the TPP is going to be a trade agreement that allows America to continue to lead in one of the fastest growing regions of the globe, the Far East. Otherwise, China will fill that void. And and if we can't sell products made in Central Illinois overseas. People at the Caterpillar facility in Decatur, right. Illinois, that make mining trucks, they don't have jobs. Right. And our coal miners, they, they're being told by the government that they can't burn as much American coal. How would you respond to those that would say, we were sold a similar bill of goods under NAFTA? And look, you can pull statistics left, right, and center to support your argument. Mm -hmm. But some would argue that NAFTA didn't deliver on what it was supposed to deliver. What's your sense of that? Well, you can also pull the statistics that show that NAFTA led to more opportunities for existing American businesses to create more opportunities to sell their products and thus create more American jobs. Mm. Uh, anytime you have a global marketplace, you're going to have those who are going to react globally and make business decisions based upon the global economic structure mm. rather than what Washington says they can mm. or can't do. We haven't had a TPA in place for a few years, but that hasn't stopped some American employers from leaving. And we have to do all we can to help the employers we have build their customer base globally, and that can be done by good, fair, and transparent trade agreements. Another global crisis facing us is the one in the Middle East. Oh, yes. It is painful to watch what is happening in parts of Iraq, in parts of Syria, the lives lost, the antiquities being looted and destroyed. Uh, it does seem as if America is not really sure what to do about ISIS. And that's just not the administration. That's you and me. You know, that's just, we are flummoxed. We're not fighting a nation. We're fighting a group of people roaming the desert. What's your sense? Well, because of that fact right. that we're fighting a, an ideology. Right, well a, stated. A, a group yeah. that uses ideology to expose their own reign of terror we ought to be able to build some very good coalitions of nation states that want to stop them. That's where this administration has failed. So can we build that coalition? I know it was built uh, with the, I guess, first and second Gulf War, although the second Gulf War, the Iraq War, wound up turning against us. And it wound up, you know, it soured the nation on what may or may not need to be done today. So how do we create it? And it also soured the world. I mean, that, that, that's the challenge, is the world is so sour because of what happened in Iraq in the early part of the century. Well, because of that, that sour experience, mm. this president was elected to be different. Mm. But this president is failing miserably in dealing with an organization and an ideology rather than a nation state. So and how do we get together on this? Uh, the some president of your, has to lead. Right. Some of your friends on the Democratic side say we need to take up the authorization for the use of military um, operations, and it's still kind of floundering in the Congress. Where do we go? I have been in favor of debating uh, an authorization for use of military right. force, but frankly, the president has all the authority he needs. Congress has been willing to work with him to ensure that our national defense and our homeland security is fully funded to be able to, to fight ISIS with our allies. But the president has to build that coalition and he said yesterday he doesn't have a strategy. In our final moments, what's the end game? Well, the end game is whether it's this president or our next president, mm. uh, the world is going to have to engage this organization who has shown the most heinous acts mm. that we've seen in humanity. And there's going to be a day that that happens I hope it's sooner rather than later so it affects less lives and less innocent okay. people. His name is Rodney Davis. He is a member of the United States Congress from the great state of Illinois. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Charter Local Edition.